Oh my God. <laughs> so you wanna hold your breath, spray in a circle, and then step away and breathe. So here we go. <coughs> okay, I'm back. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've been enjoying my recent posts about sunscreen. And now that it's getting a lot sunnier, even in Seattle, Washington, I wanted to go over a question that I get asked probably every single day. Like hands down, this is one of the most common questions I get asked about on social media. And it's how the heck do you reapply sunscreen over makeup? So today I put on my foundation, did not do contour or highlighter, which I will explain why in a moment, but we're gonna test out some of the most common methods that exist on the market today for reapplication of sunscreen over makeup. I'll start off by explaining why we need to reapply sunscreen over makeup, how often we need to do it, and then I'll go over how to have a good base like what you should look for when you're choosing a sunscreen to start off your day. And then I'll finish up with a tour through all the different options for sunscreen reapplication over makeup. And that includes sunscreen sticks, which I talked about last week, sunscreen compacts, sunscreen sprays, sunscreen powders, and then applying tinted sunscreen with a beauty blender. So here we go. All right, first things first, why do we even need to reapply sunscreen every two hours? Why do we need to bother even putting sunscreen on over your beautiful makeup canvas here. So the reason is because sunscreen breaks down over time for a variety of different reasons. So say you started off with an SPF 30 in the morning, you put on a nice even layer. However, as you go about your day due to a variety of factors, such as your skin producing oil, or maybe you're sweating, or maybe you're touching your face, or maybe your clothing rubs against it, or maybe you go and work out, or maybe you go swimming. Like there's tons of things that may happen in your environment that will actually actually cause the sunscreen ingredients to become less effective or for the sunscreen to be removed or rubbed off. Now we know that some sunscreen filters also tend to break down over time as they absorb UV. And we know that all sunscreen filters on the market work by absorbing UV to a certain extent. So because the sunscreen is getting broken down due to UV absorption throughout the day, then it, that is another reason why it's important to reapply that sunscreen so you can have a nice even layer. The other reason that I like to think of is that none of us are really applying sunscreen perfectly in the conditions that that sunscreen was tested in in the lab to get that SPF label. So we know and studies have shown that all of us do not apply the recommended amount of sunscreen coverage, which is two milligrams per centimeter squared. A study done in Germany actually picked out 60 random volunteers at the beach and they just assessed these volunteers to see whether or not they had put on adequate amounts of sunscreen. And basically not a single person put on the recommended amount of sunscreen. And this is a real world setting, right? Because these volunteers had applied their sunscreen at the beach, not knowing that they were going to then participate in this study. And they found that most people had applied less than 10% of the recommended amount, which is, as I mentioned, that two milligrams per centimeter squared. So we know that we are all very bad at applying the actual recommended amount of sunscreen in real life. And so if you are reapplying throughout the day, you're actually providing yourself a better chance of getting that adequate amount of coverage since, you know, we're not perfect to begin with. Let's talk about how you're gonna apply your sunscreen in the morning to get that nice, even base layer of sunscreen on that will serve as your canvas over which you will reapply sunscreen throughout the day. So there's actually one really important tip that I wanna give you here, which is that it's important to choose a good sunscreen that is water resistant, has high SPF, like we always recommend SPF 30 or above, and also is broad spectrum, meaning it blocks both UVA and UVB rays. So across the whole, wavelength of UV radiation. There's a couple reasons why I would recommend using a higher SPF. First of all, SPF 15, like junk, just throw that in the trash. I don't want you to use it. It's not useful. And the way you're applying it, you're probably getting like an SPF five or 10. We always say SPF 30 and above. And on days that I know I'm going to be outside for the whole day, like hiking or going to the beach, I even opt for an SPF 50 or an SPF 75. And there's this myth that people say, well, higher SPF doesn't actually help to block more UV radiation, but that's really not true. And the reason for that is we wanna take into account 
user error, or just going back to how much we as users apply. So there have actually been two studies now that have been done that are a split face study, one in 2018 by Dr. Rigel and his team in New York, and one more recently done in 2019. The one done in 2018 looked at nearly 200 volunteers at a ski resort in Vail, and they had volunteers do either an SPF 50 on one side of their face and an SPF 100 on the other side of their face. Then they had these volunteers go out, enjoy their day, you know, go skiing, get all the sun exposure, whatever. And then they looked at redness or sunburn score on the following day. This team of researchers found that the side that only had the SPF 50 sunscreen on had a significantly higher rate of sunburn. 40% of the participants had higher erythema or redness scores on the SPF 50 side of their face compared to only 13% of the participants who had higher redness scores on the SPF 100 side of their face. This study was basically repeated or done again over a longer duration of time, over five days in 2019, and this was actually a randomized control trial. This second study randomized 55 individuals to applying either SPF 50 sunscreen or SPF 100 sunscreen on randomized areas of their face and body. And then they measured their redness scores after five days. And they found that over half or 56% of the participants were burned on the SPF 50 sunscreen applied areas of their body, whereas only 7% of them had burns on the areas that were protected with SPF 100. The first sunburn to occur on an SPF 50 protected area occurred just one day after the study began, whereas that first first sunburn on an SPF 100 protected skin occurred three days after the study began. So both of these studies show that having a higher SPF really does significantly help protect your skin against UV induced redness and also sunburn. And then take into account user error where we know we're not putting a thick enough layer of sunscreen as we're meant to. So that if you're putting on an SPF 50, who knows, you're probably not getting a full SPF 50 unless you're really doing that two milligrams per centimeter squared. When I'm going out when I'm in doubt, I always will use a higher SPF because I know that will do a better job at protecting my skin over the course of the day. And that goes for reapplication as well. Now let's hop into the actual recommended techniques and products to reapply sunscreen over makeup. Now this is really tough and I struggle with this question a lot because when you have makeup on where the product is meant to stay in a specific place, it's really hard to then apply sunscreen on top of that and not have that product move. So for today, today's demonstration, I actually did not use that type of makeup that needs to stay in a specific place. So namely, I skipped contour, highlight, but I did still use a little bit of blush. So we're going to see how well this works. We're going to start off with sunscreen sprays. Then we'll talk about sunscreen powders, sunscreen sticks, sunscreen compacts, and then finally finish that off with applying tinted sunscreen with a beauty blender. I chose two sunscreen sprays to try with you today. And one is a mineral sunscreen and one is a chemical. And I'm just going to start off by saying that I prefer the chemical and I don't think I would use a mineral-based sunscreen to reapply on my face. And the reason for that really is the white cast. So the first one I'm gonna review for you is the Baby Bum Fragrance-Free Mineral 50. This is a sunscreen spray, broad spectrum SPF 50, water resistant for 80 minutes. So this would be a good option for your body. And it is formulated for sensitive skin. It's hypoallergenic. Its main ingredients are zinc oxide 15.7% and titanium dioxide 3.5%. 4%. And they do say not to spray this directly on the face. And we do always say that because we don't want you to inhale the sunscreen particles. So if you're going to apply it to your face, you either spray into your hands and then gently pat onto your face, or you're going to take a deep breath, <gasps> hold your breath, spray your face, step away and then resume breathing. So I'm just going to show you what this mineral one looks like. I've actually used this before and so I know about the white cast but I'm just going to demonstrate it to you on my arm. Oh I missed. Ah! Oh my god I'm like dripping sunscreen everywhere. So it kind of comes out like a little chunky like this. I don't know what to tell you. As you can see here you do have to rub it in like this one doesn't really come out as like an easy to use easy to rub in one like you can see my arm looks 
white on this side compared to this side and it does require quite a bit of rubbing in. So this is not one that I would recommend for the face. An SPF spray that I have been liking for the face that I've been using more recently is this one. This is the Kate Somerville Makeup Setting Spray. So you know that I love a good multitasking product and this one is both a soft focus makeup setting spray and it's SPF 50. I'm going to show you how it looks. Oh my god. <laughs> so you want to hold your breath, spray in a circle, and then step away and breathe. So here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So let's take a look. It looks pretty good in the camera. Let me check in my mirror here. This looks really, really good to me. My makeup did not budge at all. I sprayed a really good amount on. As you could tell, I was like counting the seconds in my head. And the issue with the spray and with all of these techniques in general is that you don't really know exactly how much sunscreen you're getting on your face. So you just kind of have to approximate it and then use more than you think you need, if that makes sense. The only drawback of this product is that the scent is really strong. I can really smell that sunscreen scent. So if you are sensitive to sunscreen smells or scents, then this may not be the right one for you. This is also a chemical sunscreen. It has avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene, and oxybenzone. So if you have sensitive skin or if you have a lot of allergies, then this one may not work for you either. But so far, I've been really liking this one to reapply over makeup because I don't have to actually touch my face because touching my face is what smears my makeup all over and this does a good job of letting me avoid that. Next, let's move into SPF powders. SPF powders were pretty much the only option that really existed for reapplication of sunscreen over makeup a few years ago before all these other new ones came on the market. My issue that I developed with powder sunscreens over the years is just that you don't know exactly how much you're getting on. So it's really important to use a lot and to use them properly. I'm using the Isden Mineral Brush on the go. This is the SPF powder with SPF 15. So before you start, it's really important that you prime the brush. Cause I see a lot of people, they're just taking it off and they're just like putting it on their skin. No, you're not getting enough powder on. So what you wanna do is actually turn it upside down and then like tap it really hard. I'm only tapping it on my hand cause you can't see the surface on my desk but I'm usually like tapping it really hard against my desk. Get all that powder onto the brush itself. And then I can actually see all this powder that's on the brush. But when you go like this, you should see a little plume. You see that? Then you can go ahead and put it on. See, I just don't know how much I'm getting on. That's my issue with this. Cause I feel like, is there still plume? There's still plume, okay. I would probably do that tapping thing multiple times. So like I did the tap for half my face and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the tap for the other half of my face. This one definitely doesn't ruin my makeup either. I feel like my foundation is staying in place. My blush is looking like it's staying in place too. The only issue I have is just that I don't know how much I'm getting on, which is a big issue. And that's kind of why I'm not reaching for the powders as often as I used to. Next category are sunscreen sticks. Now I did a full video on just sunscreen sticks, how to use them and reviewed five or six, I forget the number of the most viral sunscreen sticks in my last video video, which I'll link here and down below. But today I'm just going to do a very brief primer for the full video. You can of course go and check out my post from last week. So I'm a big fan of sunscreen sticks. I think they do a decent job of free application over makeup. However, there is some transfer onto the stick itself. So these are the two that I've been reaching for most frequently. This is the Beauty of Chosan Matte Sun Stick, which also has the oil absorbing powder. And this one is the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick. They both just kind of look like deodorants to be honest with you. They apply really easily. For example, if I'm just gonna go ahead and reapply, I'm just curious how this is gonna look over my makeup because I'm actually wearing makeup today. Last week, it all rubbed off because I was, you know, using so much sunscreen. So unfortunately, ooh, oh my God, this is not looking good. I don't know if you can see this, but it's like pilling on the side of my nose and on my cheek here, but most noticeably here, the product, it's like pushing around my foundation, so I don't like that. And then you can see that there's makeup coming off like on the side of the stick. I think sunscreen sticks are better for reapplication when you're not wearing a ton of makeup, like no foundation, highlighter, bronzer, contour, whatever. I think sunscreen sticks are best for when on those minimal makeup days or on your body. Now, if you're just wearing like a lightly tinted moisturizer, it will probably be fine. But today I'm wearing like full face foundation, so so it's a no for me. 
at least when it comes to applying over a full face of foundation. Now we're gonna go over sunscreen compacts. And this one is one that I haven't seen as often on social media that I think is a really great option. I'd probably rank it right up there with sunscreen sprays. This one is by Skin Better and it is kind of pricey, I will admit. It's over $60 for this, but it is a more elegant way to reapply sunscreen. So this has their Tone Smart technology, which is this technology that allows the color to kind of blend and flex into your skin color. And it is water resistant for 80 minutes and it's broad spectrum and it's a mineral sunscreen. And it comes with this little compact, this little cushion compact, and then you flip it open and then there's your sunscreen area. And you basically use it as you would like a press on powder or foundation. I I use quite a bit of force because I want to make sure that I'm getting enough on and then you apply. So I'm going to go in this side today. Definitely check to make sure that I'm not getting it on my lipstick and smearing it. That would be unfortunate and not the first time that I've done that. So here's the look. So on the right side is the sunscreen compact. On the left side, I kind of touched it up a little bit. You could tell in person, it looks like I have a bit more foundation on actually. So this looks to me a little bit more like makeup, but it does give this really nice blurring effect. Like I feel like my right side freckles and imperfections have all disappeared and are all covered up. Whereas on the left side, I can still see my freckles really clearly. Okay, the last option that I'm gonna cover today is applying sunscreen with a beauty blender. So I like using a creamy, smooth, tinted sunscreen and just put it on a damp beauty blender and just kind of go for it. So today I'll demonstrate this technique using this new sunscreen from Kosas. This is the Dream Beam Comfy Smooth Sunscreen with Broad Spectrum SPF 40. I've been really impressed with this sunscreen so far. It reminds me a lot of the Tatcha Silk sunscreen that came out a year ago, except this packaging doesn't disintegrate all over my hands and my makeup bag. This one is a mineral SPF. It also has all these skin loving ingredients like peptides, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, and allantoin. So it has a lot of these extra goodies in it that I think is pretty cool for a sunscreen. So I applied this little squiggle here. Maybe I'll just put this on half my face so we can kind of compare with the sunscreen compact. So far, so far it's looking pretty good. I know on camera, it seems to look better. You don't see as much pilling. I'm I'm gonna put a little bit more on my forehead. Here we go. Okay, this is the finished product. I have to say it looks decent in real life. The side that I used the sunscreen compact on looks a lot more smooth though, because I think the sunscreen compact is more foundation-like, whereas this side with the Kosas Dream Beam, it's more sunscreen-like, but it still looks really good. And I feel like my blush stayed on, it looks decent. Overall, I have this glow. It didn't take off my foundation. It didn't make it pill. So I would say this is a decent technique for reapplication as well. The only issue is you do have to carry around a beauty blender, which is kind of annoying. And I don't know when you would be doing that, like just fish one out of your purse throughout the day. And the other thing is that I would not use this to reapply over my eye makeup because you know, you're touching it, so you'll have to kind of smudge it a bit. Oh, and lastly, I wouldn't recommend using Beauty Blender with a mineral sunscreen because those can tend to leave a white cast unless you find a really great mineral sunscreen that's tinted that doesn't. And there are several of those options available, but if you have a darker skin tone, you may want to use a chemical sunscreen that's tinted for this reapplication. And overall, I would say not bad. Out of all of those methods that I listed, I think my favorite has to be the spray because I don't have to touch my face, which would make my makeup budge. And then the second is the sunscreen compact. The finish looked really good. It left me with a really glowy complexion. It looked similar to foundation. It didn't make me look too shiny or sticky. Third, I would say is reapplying tinted sunscreen with a beauty blender. Fourth would be the powder. And then last would probably be the sunstick. Maybe the sunstick and the powder are tied. Would love to know your guys' thoughts though and what you like to use for sunscreen reapplication over makeup. One last note I want to add is that I do not want you to rely solely on reapplying sunscreen as your sole form of sun protection. Of course, you're gonna reapply. Of course, you're gonna use one of the techniques that we talk about today. But I just want to remind you that there are lots of other things you can do. One, use a really good hat or a really good visor. So I always carry around my Bluestone Sun Shield and I love it because I can go like this. You can adjust the angle. So no matter where the sun is, 
you can adjust it appropriately. It's very comfortable with this headband and it comes in a variety of colors. This one I always carry around with me if I'm gonna be at the beach or lying out by the pool or hiking. And I also have a smaller visor version as well for travel. Aside from wearing hats, it's also really important to wear sunglasses to protect your eyes first and foremost, but also to protect the skin around your eyes because the skin there is very thin and prone to wrinkling. So you really want to use sunscreen around those areas as well. And I find that sun sticks work really well around the eye area because sun sticks are a bit more waxy. They don't tend to run as much, especially if they're sweat resistant. And there are great options for people who might have more sensitivity around their eyes. So that's my full rundown, 360 degree view of how I would recommend reapplying sunscreen over makeup. We went over all the different options today, but I am so curious to hear, like I really wanna know, what do you use to reapply your sunscreen over your makeup? Because I'm sure there are products out there that I don't know about yet, and I would really, really love the opportunity to learn. So please comment below, or if you have any thoughts or follow-up questions, and don't forget to hit subscribe. We have a lot of great content coming out for you soon. Bye.